There's gonna be a little bit of a vroom vroom in the background of this video because the guy who does the leaf blowers on the weekends, yeah, he's just outside my apartment and I can't really wait to make this video because I have plans today. Let's talk about an article published on ESPN.com by Greg Wasinski. It's a pretty big one right here. It's bold predictions for every NHL team this upcoming year. Wasinski, of course, has been in the business for a long time. He knows his way around. And this article, I didn't realize that articles can have, like, reaction emotes on them, but this article has 1.3 reactions. 1.3 likes, six fire emojis, a bunch of wows, laughs, and interestings. Yeah, I didn't know ESPN did this. That's pretty cool, honestly. But what I wanted to do in this long list of 32 different predictions was go over to the Central and talk about one of the teams that we are all projecting to being bad this upcoming season. Let's talk about Greg Wasinski's bold prediction for the Chicago Blackhawks. It's labeled out right here saying that Seth Jones is traded. Let's go over the idea that he proposes and go over the team that he potentially could see Jones getting traded to. Because, of course, we gotta get that Canadian connection in there. We gotta make things interesting for the folks in Alberta. The rapidly rising NHL salary cap is going to quickly reform our thoughts on a lot of contracts. Set at $88 million for 24-25, it'll clear $100 million in the next few years. And when it does, Seth Jones is still going to have that 9 million, 9.5 million, excuse me, million dollar AAV in his current contract, which runs through 2029-2030 with Chicago. But the higher the cap goes, the higher the possibility grows that someone would want to take on that contract for a top pairing defenseman. Okay, interesting, Greg Wasinski, top pairing defenseman. There's no getting around the reputation hit that Seth Jones has taken since he had signed that massive contract extension right as the Blackhawks dynasty crumbled on and off the ice. In 217 games, Seth Jones has 25 goals and 119 points, skating to a minus 90 in that span, which was the second worst in the NHL. These teams were terrible by design. Jones wasn't on a good team, but he wasn't terrible. His underlying numbers were better than those of his teammates in shot generation and expected goals at 5-on-5. Five five. While Jones had his detractors before the trade from Columbus, it's reasonable to ask what his numbers would look like if he pulled out of the Chicago abyss. You know, I like articles like these that go out there and kind of spin the coin to the other side, because while it is true Seth Jones has generally been not great in Chicago, he is kind of in that spot where his reputation would make him seem like he's one of the worst defensemen in the NHL, when really that's not the case. He's just overpaid. Really, really overpaid. Maybe one of the worst contracts in the NHL, but... That's all within context, right? Like, you think about the salary cap, you think about the amount of money he's making, you think about the value he brings. Sure, he's not worth 9.5 million, but as the cap gets up to 100 million, you think about it, okay, 9.5 million is like 9.5% of a $100 million salary cap. And if you do 9.5% of 88 million, which is currently the salary cap, let's do 0 0.095 times 88. That's about an $8.36 million AAV if you try to map things out to the percentage of the cap right now. It's kind of a stupid thing to talk about considering right now, I mean, the cap is at 88 million and Seth Jones is at 9.5 million, but you could realistically make the debate that he should be worth a little bit less as the years go on. Anyways, let's continue here. The NHL isn't populated with 29-year-old defensemen who could skate top pairing minutes, 25-29 per game on average for Jones last season, and his contract looks less elephantine, 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 I've never seen that word before, nice word there, Greg Osinski, with each passing season. This could be the season where Jones gets moved if the right situation presents itself to GM Kyle Davidson, who is not the GM who traded for and signed Seth Jones to that contract. Funny enough, the GM who did is now running the Edmonton Oilers, a team that has a much maligned 26-year-old defenseman making $9.25 million against the cap through 2030. 
Seth Jones, Stan Bowman reunion? When? Okay. Calm your horses there, Greg Wasinski, but this is the article's idea. Could we see Edmonton getting Seth Jones in some sort of a trade, in some sort of a big transaction? And I just gotta go out there and say, the contract that Wasinski is talking about that's not 26 years old defenseman Darnell Nurse, he's 29 years old, and he is making $9.25 million a year. It's a big, lofty cap hit. He's been making that amount of money for a while. Maybe that's what he means. Like, oh, that's when he signed the contract. Is that correct? I'm not too sure. But either way, Seth Jones is a guy that technically does fulfill what it is that the Oilers need. Right-handed, minutes-eating defensemen so that you could give Evan Bouchard a break and not be forced to rely on Ty Emerson and Troy Stetcher. The Oilers kind of need one. One of these. And even though Seth Jones does have this reputation of being a bum, it all just kind of stems with the contract. If he was making like six million bucks, I don't think anybody would be really batting an eye here. It's just because he's so overpaid, people are framed to look at the inefficiencies in his game and why he's not worth let's say a million and a bit over what Quinn Hughes is worth and more money than what Kyle McCarr is worth and all these other defensemen in the NHL who are just so good, so amazing. You have Seth Jones, who is making more than all of them, and you have Darnell Nurse, who is also in that spot. Kyle McCarr is making nine. Quinn Hughes is making 7.8. Some of these guys are very, very well valued, but Seth Jones making more is kind of yucky. But anyways, if you wanted to talk about Stan Bowman going out there and making the trade for Seth Jones, this would be the ultimate I'm standing by my guys kind of move. This would be him trying to revive the glory days and taking charge of a team in Edmonton that is already so good we expect Edmonton to be, let's say, the best team in the Pacific Division this year. I think most people are putting them at number one in their lists. Imagine if they got Seth Jones and they actually did improve that defense. Look, I'm not going to go out there and say he's an amazing all-star player like he maybe used to be in his days with Nashville and early Columbus days, but he is better than Ty Emerson, and he will give a stabilizing, long-term, projectable guy into the lineup every single night. Heck, I'm not even going to try to talk about the money and how everything could work out there because there are salary cap shenanigans that would probably have to go down anywhere if Seth Jones gets traded. His $9.5 million AV salary is so big and there's no way the Blackhawks are retaining 50% of that until it expires in the 2030s. They're not holding on to $4.25 million or no, $4.75 million, excuse me, in nothing money the Blackhawks are. So if the Oilers wanted to make things interesting, if they wanted to somehow get this done, imagine having Darnell Nurse and Seth Jones together. Firstly, you could play these guys the entire game and they're not going to get tired. That is awesome. But secondly, they're overpaid guys. These two guys' reputations in the NHL of being overpaid and not really all too great in comparison to the dollar amounts they're making. Imagine an $18 million pairing of Darnell Nurse and Seth Jones. That's kind of nuts, isn't it? So Oilers fans, I want you to let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. How do you feel about the idea of Seth Jones getting sent over to your squad? And do you think this is a reasonable thing to think about? There's very good reason to say no, but there also is a good enough argument that this idea isn't the worst I've heard. So Greg Wasinski, big shout out to you for getting this prediction hot enough so that we can talk about it here on the YouTube channel, but I want you to let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you're a Blackhawks fan, what do you think it would take to trade Seth Jones? What do you think the trade package is that you need to receive for you to be comfortable doing that? And if you're Edmonton, what are your thoughts on the Seth Jones trade idea? What is the most that you would be willing to pay for this guy? Assuming the salary cap is able to work itself out. I'm not even going to try to fill in the blanks there. It's just too complicated. But there are different avenues to go down if you really, really, really wanted to make this work. So yay or nay, Jones to Edmonton. Thoughts in the comment section below. The article will be linked in the description if you wanted to read the other 31 hot takes and predictions for the upcoming season from Craig Wasinski. He always does a really good job, so go out there and give the article its ad views. But for now, I hope you enjoyed this British Astros 99. And bye.